Hey everybody, how's it going? Max with Buzz Talks here, and I'm back with a Westworld live stream. I want to thank everybody who's in the chat right now. Hey, Rod Fooder and uh, Christopher Phillips, what's going on? I want to wish everybody a happy Father's Day. Um, what else? And episode nine is today. Uh, it came so fast. I'm so excited. Honestly, I don't know what to expect. Um, I think what we can expect based on season one, we'll get some big reveals this uh, this episode that's going to pave the way for... Uh, episode 10, which is going to kind of like put the bow on top and really set up season three. So I think we can expect a big episode and a big revelation that we've been kind of building up to uh, till now. So I think now is a good time to have it because I really want to do a like thorough discussion breakdown. I want to talk to you guys about Westworld, all your theories, bring them in. I want to discuss them. I want to, you know, extrapolate and see what's going on because I think there's a lot to discuss and there's a lot of there's a lot that we're going to see this episode. So I'm pumped. Uh, this is my new location, my bedroom. I want to apologize for the lighting. It's like crazy reflective. I don't know if it's blinding you guys or not. But anyways. Um, but I think that's about it. So I was thinking that we would chat Westworld right until it's about to air. And then we can uh, all enjoy it. And then hopefully we'll do uh, we'll do a live stream soon. Uh, after episode 9. Because I really want to talk about the revelations and then how they're going to wrap up um the season so very exciting and i would also like to do discussions on season three when episode 10 is done we can kind of look at what's next for season three and uh, i really pride um westworld on really having a theme for each season they've done so far uh like season one was really the focus on the hosts on them kind of breaking through their chains becoming self-aware and that was you know the cloud of the maze it's about every host finding their own inner center, the maze. Whereas this season is a different kind of perspective where the hosts are breaking free, but the underlying plot is the door. And um, I think that door, instead of the maze, finding your own inner center, the door is actually meant for humans. We've seen the door with James Delos, and I think we're going to see the door with William. And that door, I believe, is the passage from one world into another. So I think that's going to enca encapsulate this season. So it'll be interesting to see what they're going to go with next season and what that means. Because um, it's interesting how they're going to tell it from a story perspective. Do you have the hosts go into the real world, but then your story is kind of over? So it'll be really interesting. And I'll, uh, it'll be interesting to see if they go with this timeline route. Like... I don't fault, I love Westworld for the timelines. I love the fact that they jump timelines and I love it most importantly because they use it effectively to tell the story. They don't just do timelines for the sake of doing timelines. They do timelines because we look at it through the host's eye. The fact that you don't know what's the past and what's the present. And it's the piecing together of the past and the present that makes the show to me like amazing and we watched that through the context of a host like last season we watched it through dolores and this season we're watching the past and present timelines through bernard so i'm interested to see if they do timelines in season three let me know what you guys think um but before we get into it uh i went through the comment section really quick uh before i hopped on the live stream and i got some ideas going so i just wanted to talk about uh some comments that people are leaving leave my thoughts on it if you guys want to leave some questions or th your personal theories of what's going to happen this this episode please write it down and i will get right to it i promise um so uh first thing somebody said but dolores says that she sees the future so we've heard that dolores say that she could see the future she's going to use this weapon and this individual who wrote this says that she is fully sentient which allows her to see the future and she says that her future ends with teddy and it says that and she tells teddy that they're together to the end and she and this individual thinks that william will take or could take teddy's body what i will say to that is dolores can't see the future um I think that that statement was loaded in the sense that she sees the future because she knows how to use the weapon. She knows all these different factors, which would hopefully lead to the future of her and Teddy together. Um, I don't think her and Teddy are going to end up together because, uh, first of all, she taint she changed Teddy and he's a different guy now. And that's not to say that he's going to change back. But I think we've been seeing plot development between them where Dolores is almost upset 
that Teddy is different. She's not getting the same like recognition that she did before. And I, I do think William will take her place. And I'm, I, I've been reading comments down below and people are saying like, how ridiculous is that for William to end up with Dolores? And to me, I'm not saying that William and Dolores are going to run into the sunset in this season. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is it's going to lay down the foundation of them coming together eventually, because I think the arc of season one and this season, William and Dolores's relationship cannot be overstated. The relationship that Teddy has with Dolores is solely based off of her relationship that she developed with William. And I think, um, there were like a Romeo and Juliet love story that took, it was like Pocahontas. It was like forbidden love, like a human fell in love with a host. And the only reason it went sour was because William had to return to the real world. He had, he's a real person. He had to go have a family. He had to run his company and Dolores never aged. So that ended up making him very sour. He went in to make Dolores suffer because that's what made her more real. And we're starting to see, and I think we'll see even more in this episode, and we see it in the trailer, is that William is really scarred. And he says in the preview of this episode coming up, he said that there was a stain that only you could see. And I don't think this stain is that he's a bad person. I think this stain is the park. As soon as he went with Dolores, he fell in love. He had all these real feelings about her, and that it screwed him. And now William has always had a fixation on the park on Westworld. He pursued the maze because he wanted it to be real because it's the best he ever felt in his life. And he was truly himself. So I think whatever happens, I think when William makes that transformation, sure, there'll be resentment, there'll be hatred, but I think that sets up for William and Dolores coming back together because their paths always come back to each other. So I think we're going to see that unfold throughout uh, the series of Westworld. And I think the door is going to be done at the end. It's going to be, it's going to finalize the season when William passes through the door. And I don't think, and people also I've read in the comments, they're like, he wouldn't want to do that. I don't think William's going to have a choice. I think he will be, maybe when he puts the gun to his head, he may shoot himself. And we think that William killed himself, but then his eyes open again and he's in a host body and we'll find out that he successfully transferred into a new body. So that's what I think. Um, but then that kind of contradicts what another theory is out there. And people think that William or the elderly version of the man in black is currently a host. Um, somebody said that he could be a host and he's seeking the door. And they're asking if this is true. Um, but what I will say is that goes against what the door means, I think. Uh, to that argument, if, if William was a host, the biggest thing I could lay down is that he's on a journey of fidelity, which we haven't seen. Um, so the first reason why he's not a host is because it's a trope that they've used in season one. If you want to tell a successful story uh, and an engaging story, you need it. You need to further deepen and develop the world rather than hang on plot tropes that you've done in, in season one. We we got that that reveal that Bernard was actually a host. Like we've had that before. And you need to do something new. And the reason why I'm so amped into William being human and transferring into a host is because that's what they've been telling us this whole season. That pursuit of immortality and changing consciousness from a human into a host body. That's been the rules of this season. That's what they've laid. That's what they presented to us. So it would be irrelevant and stupid if they didn't use that trope. And I think that's why the door is so important. Um, and if he was a host, he wouldn't be pursuing the door. He'd be pursuing the maze. And Ford told William in season one that the maze isn't for him. Um, but he, he also told uh, William that he has a, a story for him in development and that's the world of stakes. And then he also made the door. So I think it's safe to say from my point of view that William isn't a host. Um, but then somebody, somebody went all out and they assume that everyone is a host um, because the safety of the park is working perfectly. Um, and it makes sense over 35 years to start just switching everybody into hosts. And what I would say is from a storytelling perspective, that doesn't really go anywhere. If you if you ever reveal that every single person is a host, then there's not much enjoyment or anticipation for the show. Like, where would they go if everyone was a host? 
And I, I don't think that's what the show's about. I think they're telling a story of like redemption and um, kind of breaking your chains. And, and it's a, it's a, it's a, and it's a debate as to whether um, is it ethically right to treat a conscious being like this? And they're starting to break out and rebel. And I think that's the story they're trying to tell rather than like the world is already taken over by hosts. I think that's a lot more interesting and engaging. And I think it really raises the question on who to like root for as a viewer. Do you root for the humans or do you root for the hosts who've been like beaten and abused over the 35 years of Westworld being open? So I think that's uh, interesting. One more uh, theory I wanted to talk about that uh, I saw in the comments, which I found very interesting, is the fact that William is the one in the bathtub. Uh, so somebody says that uh, the person in the bathtub is wearing a fob or some kind of watch or something that is worn by older men in Western movies. Um, what other evidence does he have? And this guy thinks that we've been watching William as a host this whole time. And his observation is, why would they change the original actress playing his wife, Juliet, to a new actress, Sayla Ward? And to combat that, I would say, why would they cast a young William and an old William? Like, why would those actors be the same? Why would they not just de-age Ed Harris or age Jimmy Simpson? Um, and that's for money. And I, I think that's why they would recast somebody, because it's 30 years in the future. So you'd want them to look a bit older. And you kind of want it to match with William's aging. The fact that Jimmy Simpson looks a bit different older because he's being played by Ed Harris. You want to keep that continuity the same. Whereas Anthony Hopkins is very iconic. So you could de-age him and that would work out. Um, but this person thinks that that's not his wife. It's somebody else. And to be fair, it is possible because I got that information off the Westworld wiki. That her name was Juliet and she was being played by Cella Ward. That's how I know that that's William's wife. Um, but I could be wrong. So that's good. It's good observation. Um, what else? He says, I don't think that's his wife. She's someone else. I think that the comment made by his daughter in the last episode about suffering will be the revelation to William that he has been dead all this time and that he is a host. My other theory is that the daughter has been the head of Delos and running the show. That's interesting. Uh, what I will say with William and suffering is I do think Ford, Ford's storyline involves suffering. Um, he's coming to terms with who he is and he has to pay for what he's done. That's a part of it. And it's, a part of it is Ford giving him kind of a jab because they had like a love-hate relationship, I'm sure. Um, but I wouldn't go as far as to say that he's a host for those reasons. Um but it is possible. I just don't know how they would do that reveal and why they would do that reveal. Um, because essentially what this person is saying is that he's following the same storyline as Bernard. Um, that the Bernard in the present is almost looking back on his reveries and trying to find himself, but he's a unique blend of Arnold and Bernard. Um, and I just find that if we jump in the bandwagon that William is a host, it goes against the tropes of the door that they've already set up. Um, yeah, unless we're seeing a run through of him as a host and the transfer was already done, but I, I don't, I think that's too convoluted and I don't think that personally, I don't think that works for me. Uh, but I think it's, it's definitely a possibility. So thank you guys for your ideas, but now I'm going into the chat. So what's going on everybody? Oh, what do we got here? Uh, what's up, Alex? Hey, Jonathan, programmer of video games. What's up? Um, Mr. Parcel, <laughs> uh, Finescence 808, Christopher Phillips. What's going on, everybody? All right, the programmer of video games with the first question or comment. Uh, his theory, Ford told Juliet the truth about what William did, and that's how she knew that William was a monster. Um, okay, I found something on the web for Ford told Juliet the truth about what William did, and that's how she knew that William was a monster. Take a look. Siri's got all the answers. <laughs> Jesus. It's always listening, eh? Anyways. Um, sure. Him being a monster and her finding that out, you know, I, I think that's a huge factor of why she killed herself because she's dating this person who's fake. Uh, he pretends to be this philanthropist good guy, but then in the park he can be his true self, essentially. 
Um, I just don't see the the motivation for Ford to tell his wife that. Like, what's his motivation to be like, hey, like he had this love affair with Dolores and they went on this adventure and he found himself. Like, I don't think that serves Ford. I think that his wife would find out because it's noticeable. And you can see, like, even in uh, earlier in the, in the season when we see Jemmy Simpson or young William look at Dolores and she meets young Emily. His wife was there and she looked very salty because it's clear that they have somewhat of a connection and Dolores is still interested in William. Like there's a part of her that still remembers him. So I think over time that would make her salty. What I will say though, is Ford's meddling in William's personal life. I think he had meddling to do with grace or Emily. I'm getting mixed up on the names now because in the show they called the kid Emily, but in the wiki, they called her grace. So I'm like jumping back and forth. I'm just going to call, I'm going to try and call her Emily, even though I think grace is a better fit, but whatever. Um, I think the only meddling that Ford did is he would go to Emily and tell her about the gala. And I think he had a role in putting her on the path to go into Westworld. And we saw that she was looking for the double hexagonal logo on her map. And that indicates that she was looking for William's secret project. So I think Ford gave her some classified information that could have enticed her to go into the park because she never really wanted to. Um, and I think that's all because he wants to push his own storyline. And I think Grace is integral for William to go on that journey of self-discovery to the door because she's a huge part of his life. And one of his biggest mistakes, because she suffered because he was stuck. His life was stuck in the park. Um, so I think he's going to confront Grace. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see her die this episode. If we see or I keep calling her Grace. Fuck it, Grace. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Grace die this episode or next episode. I think she's disposable. I don't think she's a host. I think she's the real the real person. And I think Ford had a role in her being there. And I think she, her role is she is the only anchor keeping William to his real world. And once she's gone, he'll have nothing left. And that's like, that'll be a jab of Ford to William because Ford is going to make William feel that suffering and pain that Dolores and all these other hosts ex have experienced from him on a day-to-day -day basis. And he's going to have to experience that now. And then he'll be put in an immortal body where he'll have to remember it and live through it. And it'll be a weird, like, here, you're immortal now, but almost a jab to him and almost a curse because he has to live with that for the rest of his life, which pretty much is forever. So I think Ford will go out with a bang uh, this uh, the next couple episodes. Uh, Mr. Uh, Parcel staying up at 3 a.m. in Greece just to see Westworld. You know what? It's worth it. To be honest, I'm excited to get, I'm going to get the reaction and review up tonight. And then I'm going to bed because I'm on like two hours of sleep because I went camping. So I'm very excited. I'm very excited to go to bed. Uh, and it's not that hard to stay up till 3 a.m. And just have a coffee. You got it. And it's worth it. It's episode nine. It's episode nine. It's an important day. Uh, and on again, uh, theory. Uh, Man in Black will be transferred to a host body this episode since he always wanted real consequences. That could be the suffering Emily refers to when she takes him from uh, Ake or Akichita. Um, I agree. I don't think uh, if you guys have seen the um, episode uh, preview, um, it looks like they're at like a celebration. And I don't think that's what we're going to see in the present with um, Grace and William. I think what we're going to see is, first of all, she's going to want to get her dad some help. Um, and I think what we've seen, and they haven't touched on it since, but we've seen that she's looking for that logo, William's biggest mistake. And what I think her saying that he'll suffer more is the fact that she's going to probably take him there or want to go there. And it's suffering because he has to experience the pain he's in, plus the mistakes he made when he was younger. And he has to see his daughter learn and experience that so i think that in itself is really like and it seemed like grace was angry with them so i think there's more to her plan than just getting them to escape um yeah so that's what i think um i think william's death though won't be i don't think grace intends him to die and i don't think grace intends him to switch bodies I think Grace is going to be after her. Like she, her grandfather was printed as a host 
And I think she'll want more answers to that. And she'll want William to confront that. And uh, I think that's the, that's the suffering that she's talking about. And I think something will happen where I think Grace is going to die. I think William, you know, I'm debating whether if I'm sticking true to my theory and William wakes up in a host body, I don't know whether it would be in episode nine or the next episode, episode 10. Um, because it's a big reveal and I feel like they still have a little bit of plot to lay down, but it's very possible. Um, and if I was to wager how it's going to happen, I think he'll actually kill himself and the audience will be in shock because he'll be dead. And then we'll see him awake in a new body, remembering everything that happened, remembering that his daughter died or like whatever, all those consequences. And, uh, it'll be interesting to see his interaction with Dolores because we know that that's going to happen. So I'm, I'm very interested to see what's going to go on. And even from a production standpoint, by the way, I want to quickly mention, it's a smart thing to do. Um, if you notice with Westworld, since all the hosts don't age, they have a hard time casting children and old people. Because, to be frank, if they're old, you don't know how long they're going to last. You don't want them to pass away uh, during production. That's why Anthony Hopkins... I it. I guarantee you if Anthony Hopkins is all in well, he'll be back in season three, but every time they're going to introduce him, they're going to close his story. So in season two, they're going to wrap him up and move on. And they're going to wrap like season one, they killed him, wrapped it up, moved on. And they're going to keep doing that. And I think Ed Harris's time is next. He plays the old William. And this is why this is so, this is such an important device is that you keep the character of William, but you pass the baton on to Jimmy Simpson, the younger actor. And, uh, that's a way to save your ass as a, as a production. So I, I think that's the smart move um, in that sense. Uh, Alex Rhodes, uh, what is the weapon? This is one, I'm not 100% sure on what the weapon is because it all means different things. Um, we know that William built it because it was a part of his personal project. We know that Dolores sees it as a weapon. We know that William sees it as his biggest mistake. We know that um, all the hosts see it as the great valley beyond or the pearly gates or, or like the heaven in a sense. And we know that all the hosts are going there and Ford is having the hosts go there because they see it as a form of escape. So the weapon needs to be a solution where it, it fulfills all three of those things. And First of all, we know what it could be based on because William's idea was immortality, that we record all the guest information, their data, uh, the choices that they make, and we figure out who they are, and then that will allow us to uh, create or recreate them. And we've learned that they know how to print human consciousness now. In the marble, they print consciousness. They just don't know how to put it in a body. So we know that that was William's big project. So chances are that this weapon is going to involve those or that part of the plot second of all it has to be weaponized so how can it be used as a weapon and that's dolores's part how can this be weaponized and used against the humans to help them win the fight um and thirdly it has to be a method of escape so what i think it is is i think it's a combination of multiple things i think we've seen bernard uh flash forward when charlotte asked him what happened to abernathy's control module he flashed to himself picking it up out of a cradle looking thing. So I think first of all, there's going to be a cradle there. And I think that the cradle, instead of it being for hosts living out their basic storylines in Westworld, I think it's going to be a cradle for humans. And it's going to be the cradle that holds every single guest that has ever been um, recorded the DNA, their choices printed into a control module, and it's going to be put into a cradle. And this cradle is going to be different because it's essentially going to be future world. And what I mean by future world is it's going to be the modern day life of all of these real people. And I think Dolores will be able to go in there and learn about who they are, learn about every person who ever went into the park, learn about their day to day. And I think Bernard is going to go in there too, because when he talked to Strand in the first episode, he finished his sentence less than ideal. And I think that's important because they have every human coded down to the very word that they say. And th those are the tests of fidelity. You know that they pass the tests when they copy exactly what they're going to say. And Bernard knew what Strand would have said in that situation, which means that I think Bernard learned about Strand, a human, 
And I think he did that in the cradle. And that's why it's a weapon. And Ford says in season one that Bernard and host kind aren't ready to escape. Um, and that's why I don't think Maeve made the choice to go back because Ford believes that in order for them to win and to be successful and all Ford wants is for hosts to break free and be the next step in human evolution is that they need to suffer more to become more conscious and they need to learn about their enemy, the humans. And that's where Dolores comes uh, to play. And that's why the weapon is so key is because it's a cradle for Dolores to learn everything she needs to know about their enemy, about every single human who's ever walked in Westworld. Um, so I think that's why that's key. So I think that's going to be a huge part. And I think in that cradle is going to be William, uh, William's printed control module. And uh, that's why William wants to burn it to the ground. It's his biggest mistake because he was recreated in there. And he, ta he talks like a couple episodes earlier uh, in episode two, he tells Lawrence, he's like, I'm upset with the judgment that I've been given. It's not me. I was the villain because that's who I was in a world with no stakes. So I think he wants to burn the whole thing to the ground because they have a bank of human consciousness in there. Um, and they'll be able to plop out that marble and put it in the body that Ford printed, which we have, which we noticed that was missing a couple episodes earlier, man, I'm piecing everything together right now. This is awesome. Um, but yeah, so I think that's how William's going to get printed because his marble is in the cradle. And I think that'll work out. And I think even little things like Akichita, I think he's going to find his wife Kawana there because I think Ford took notice and he wants these hosts to be happy. And I think we'll find Kawana also at the great Valley beyond or the Valley beyond. Um, what else? So that's what I think the weapon is. It's for them to learn about their enemy and it's printed consciousness. And that's why it's useful for other characters. Uh, we know that Abernathy, he has, code in him storage of 35 years of guest dna um and essentially bernard told us that they were circular code which means that um and he didn't know what it was at first until he saw um james delos he recognized abernathy's code which means that i think abernathy has people's consciousness embedded in his system and i think bernard is going to put abernathy's system in this future world cradle all of the people are going to come out of his mo module and be downloaded into future world. And I think that's how Abernathy is going to be cured. The people will be eliminated from his mind and put into the future world cradle. And then Abernathy will be okay. I think that's how Ford, we noticed that Ford isn't in Bernard's mind um, uh, in the present. So I think Bernard is going to drop off Ford out of his mind in future world. So I think that's what we're, we can expect to see. Uh, what else do we got here? That was a long answer. Sorry, guys. But I, I think I just pieced it together. I think that that's my most confident guess on why I th or what I think the the weapon is. Um, so, yeah. Next question. Uh, and on again. Also would explain why he's shown pointing his gun at the head. Uh, doesn't want to live as a host. Thoughts. Oh, um, uh, William shooting himself in the head because he doesn't want to live as a host. <clears throat> it's possible. Definitely possible. Uh, it's a good theory. Um, I just think we've seen the reveal that he's a host before and we have seen that he's, he has, he's looking back on his memories or reveries, however you want to say it. Um, but I think that's just a way to connect him to the hosts. But um, I think it's possible. I just don't think we'll see the reveal of him as a host because we've seen it before and it's a common trope that they've already introduced. So as I said before, first season was the maze. This season is the door and they're very different things. And that's why I think William is not a host because this game is meant for him as a human. But anyways, uh, finescence. Uh, I also think of the heartbreak of Dolores both being real also, and he probably feel out of love with his wife. Maybe Wait, you're thinking about the heartbreak of William being real. And falling out of love with his wife. I'm not sure what you mean, but I totally, but I think that Dolores and William will f f stumble back in love, not in this season necessarily, but I think William will be a host. Um, and that will kind of lead into the next storylines. 
Uh, Finescence, in the episode trailer, Maeve is talking to an older man that could be Ford, and she's crying. Do you think it's possible that she could be that he could be telling her uh, she has to let go of her daughter to survive? Um, I don't think so. Um, hmm. What I said in the uh, preview video is I said that that is Ford. But I think they're going to be jumping back and forth between Bernard and Ford. I think we're going to see Maeve communicate with Ford because of her cognition. She's wired. So she's going to look at Bernard and see him for who he is, that he's being controlled by Ford. Whereas to the audience with the naked eye, it's Bernard and Maeve. But in reality, it's Ford in his mind talking to Maeve. Um, and I think Ford is going to stitch her up. And I think that, you know, Ford, Ford has a soft spot for all the hosts um and he wants them all to genuinely have a, a a chance at life and a positive chance at life so i think ford would actually want her to pursue her daughter because that's a cornerstone of her having a real and happy life so i think he won't tell her to uh, let go of her i think he'll go tell her to go get her um yeah but that's that's the cycle. Maeve has to keep going to get her daughter um, because if she's conscious, great. If she's not, then pursuing her daughter will constantly bring back that suffering to push her to the center. So I think I think Ford wants her to go back uh, to her daughter. And that's why I think that's so significant. And I think we're going to see her stumble upon or reunite with Akichita and Maeve's daughter. So um, I think we can expect that either this episode or next episode. Uh, what else do you got? Uh, Jamal Rouser. Uh, what do you think of Dolores' reaction will be when she sees William? Will she remember him? 100%. Dolores knows and remembers everything. Once you become conscious, you're self-aware of every experience you've ever had. And she's able to look back on that. So the thing with Dolores is she's in a unique spot where she understands that we've been seeing her jumping back and forth where people see her as the villain because she's, she's being that bad individual. But she's even said that in order for them to succeed, they all need to suffer and she's been making them suffer. And I think Dolores, it'll be interesting to see what her reaction is, but Dolores knows that she was deeply in love with William at one point. And she's also going to know that his suffering that he inflicted on her it's still with her and it still hurts her, but it was necessary and it was the heartbreak necessary to push her to her own center. So it'll be interesting to see what their reaction is because they have such a deep and complicated history. And Dolores understands that the way he treated her was, wasn't was just to be the villain. It was for something much larger. And I think that's something that she might learn um, later on. But it seems like, based on what we've seen, William's going to shoot at her. So I think there's going to be a point um, between them. Dolores might even kill him and bring him back. Like, who knows? But I know they're going to have a point of contention um, some point in the next two episodes. And I think it, it's, it's, it's great because all William ever wanted when he was like 30 years old in the park is he wanted Dolores to be real. That's the only thing he ever wanted. And now that he's like 60, 70 years old, he finally has it. Dolores is now real. And he has to confront that. So I think it's going to be very interesting to see. Because William and Dolores did interact last season, but she wasn't conscious yet. Um, so now we're really going to see William get the wish that he wanted when he was 30. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, Andy Green. Why did the horse die in the desert if, horses, if the horse was a robot? When Ghost found the guy, when Akichita found the guy tied to the tree in the desert, anyone know? Um, I think it's because it's the, it's the rules of the programming. Um, in order to for it to be real, a real experience, these and the hosts too, like they're programmed to die if they lose a certain amount of blood. They're programmed to die if this happens or this happens. Horses are meant to die if they aren't supplied with water and whatever, so that they they die off. And it's all to uphold the realism of the game. And that, that's all it is. Um, and the horse died to, in, in a weird way, enrich Logan's experience because it was a real experience. Um, and they wouldn't have let him die. He would have been rescued regardless. So, um, yeah. Uh, what else do we got here? 
but, 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 but. somebody's calling me the Night King because my eyes are so blue. Uh, thank you. Uh, the programmer of video games. Others probably didn't realize this, but Akichita has a character was a character uh, since the first season. He was, and they recasted him. And um, it makes me think that they had plans for him this season. Um, a part of me, when I first saw episode eight, I thought it was an amazing episode, by the way. And I'm surprised by the positive reception it got. I honestly thought how half the crowd would hate it. Um, but it seemed like it was overwhelmingly positive. Um, but what the hell was I talking about? Oh, yeah. Akichida. Um, I think they planned it out. Uh, we, we see him in season one and he was the one that may have kept seeing and he kept coming in and, and torturing her, but they recasted him and uh, they showed Maeve dying with her daughter in the maze. And I thought that that was just a, a fancy way of showing, Oh, she's approaching the maze and we, we would never get an answer, a realistic answer to it. But we did. Akichita was always there drawing and, and, and doing that. And I think they almost took Akichita out of season one and put him into season two, um to keep us engaged and theorizing as well as maybe they didn't have enough room and they thought they'd put him in here um but i thought it was an excellent episode and uh i like i like the consistency how they had akichita in season one and now they have him in season two so i thought that was excellent and i hope akichita becomes one of the primary like when you think of hosts you think of maven dolores and i hope akichita becomes a part of that uh, equation because they all have weird differences in dealing with humans and pushing hosts to consciousness. So I find that really interesting. And I think they all have the key or an answer to something that the other one doesn't have. Um, so I'm really interested to see these characters come together because it seems like Dolores and Maeve have a, a mutual disagreement but respect for each other. But Akichita calls, her, calls Dolores the death bringer. Like he does not like her at all. And it seems like Dolores doesn't really have any sympathy for Akichita either. So I'm really interested to see the characters come together. Uh, Jamal Roser, uh, do you think William's wife was a host? I do not. Uh, no. Um, I'm not one to usually point the finger and say that somebody's a host unless there's hard evidence. I don't think there's any evidence to suggest that she is a host. And I think it makes more sense if she isn't because it further illustrates the line that William has walked between the life that he wants and the life that he has, where like he has this wife and kid and he has this family and a company. But the irony or the worst part is, is that he's in love with somebody who doesn't age. Um, so I think it makes more sense if she is not a host and I don't see how her being a host would enrich the plot at all. Um, so yeah, that's how I feel. Uh, Skeptis Trader Bear. I feel like they revealed that in episode 10, it would be the last uh, second cliffhanger for off season. Unfortunately, I don't know what you mean, but um, cool. I'm sorry. I, I don't know exactly what you're saying. Uh, DNT. Do you think uh, what Bernard saw when he woke up at the beach is not real at all? The events two weeks later is not real because there's a lot of things confusing. Like the host killed off was mixed up. Oh yeah. I saw that. Um, yeah. They killed the same woman like a bunch of times. Um, I would chalk that up to Bernard being um, his cognition being off. I wouldn't chalk that up to it being like a simulation or a fake reality because they introduced us the rules and very strict rules that when the dimensions of the screen change and get smaller. That tells us that they're in the cradle. And at this point, they can't default on those rules. Um, so I was never a subscriber to the theory that Bernard is in a cradle. Um, I just think either it was a production error or it's just Bernard getting mixed up in his own head about uh, timelines because he repeats what Strand said. And that's why I think the cradle is key in the great valley beyond because i think bernard is able to learn about all these humans that he's then going to interact with on the beach and i think bernard was left there for a specific reason to achieve a specific thing for dolores or for host kind so i think he's confused there for a reason i th he could have downloaded all of the um human-based code in him like who knows 
I just think he's there for a reason, and I think it, it's real. And he's meant there to be some type of distraction or something so Dolores can ready the weapon or be ready to face the humans when they journey through the valley. Uh, what else do you got here? Ba -ba 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 I rewatched episode one and feel that the timelines are all screwy. I think him waking up on the beach is him remembering things when Charlotte interrogates him. Um, no, I don't, I didn't see it like that. Uh, the way I saw it was, um, and this season they made it a bit more clear than last season with the timelines. I remember go back to my Westworld season one, like episode six timeline video. So in episode two of season one, I was saying William is the man in black hands down, which means that every episode we watched, I would dissect the timelines and the cuts were very specific where Dolores was in Lawrence's home and she was by a fountain. And in one shot, her daughter, uh, Lawrence's daughter would be there. The next shot, she wouldn't be there. And it was shot like it was a cohesive thing, but there were little cues that you could pick up on that would show you that it's a different timeline. So I think this season they're a bit more, um, they let you know. So I think Bernard wakes up on the beach two weeks after the gala. He see You see flashbacks of everything that happened and we see him. He walks from there to the Mesa. He sees Charlotte. Charlotte uh, takes him and, can, and, sh and finds that he's a host and then they were being interrogated. So um, I don't think the timelines are screwy. To me, it, it, makes, it makes perfect sense. Um, but I don't know. I might, I might be missing something. Uh, Mr. Paris, I was pretty confused with the Japanese theme in the past episode. Um, yeah, the Japanese theme, it didn't really, I like Shogun World, but I feel like it didn't introduce, uh, any more significance to the plot. Um, it was just another world that repeated the same things. Um, and really it, it didn't do anything. It was literally just and a, a something for Maeve to a hurdle for Maeve to jump over to get closer to her daughter. We really didn't, it didn't forward the plot at all, except show us that there's another park and that some of these characters are based off each other. So yeah, I don't think there was much revelation there. So maybe that's why you're confused. Uh, DNT. Wow. I just realized that we have to wait at least two years for season three. Nuts. We have to wait. What? We have to wait at least two years. Two years. I don't like that news. <laughs> I'm going to go look it up. I was hoping we'd at least get it in like a year and a half. Uh, let me know, DNT, where you got that information. I know that they approved season three, um, but I didn't know that they were looking for it to be that long. Uh, what else do we got here? Uh, and on again. Uh, I agree he will kill. So he's talking about William. I agree that he will kill himself, but it will be after he's transformed to a host body. We'll see him wake up after that. Um, but it will be in a guest cradle where all of his experiences are stored. Um, I disagree with you for one reason. Um, I like your idea. It's a very cool idea, but I disagree because I think his host body is going to be young William. Um, and it's clear that old William is shooting himself in the head. Um, I think it's going to be young William from, from a production standpoint that you want to out with the old in with the new actors. Uh, also from a storytelling perspective, William was found himself in the park when he was 30 and he fell in love with Dolores. And I think it's almost, it's like poetic in a way for him to return to that state of mind. It was the state, it was the point in his life where he found himself. And I think that's why it's so important for William to be put into himself when he was 30. So we can almost start again. He can re fall in love with Dolores and they can restart that life that he always wanted, but he never could have. That's why I think that's significant. My guess would be, I think he actually pulls the trigger. I think the audience is going to be in shock. And I think his eyes will awaken in a younger body. And I think every, I think it's going to, I hope they do it like this because everyone, it would be like, what the hell just happened? Where like, imagine he shoots himself, boom, screen goes black. And then he looks at himself in the mirror and we see a young William. I think that would really trip us out. And Dolores could be there testing for fidelity. I don't know, but I think that's very significant. And on top of the fidelity testing, like that's why it's so key where, uh, they said that the interviewer who's testing for fidelity has to be from that person's network. And it really screwed up James Delos every time because William would get older and older, but Dolores never changes. So it would be like William returning all of a sudden back to the time he was young. Um, 
what else do we got here? Ba, 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 ba. Skeptis Trader Bear. Uh, I think we've seen Inside the Valley Beyond, but only a little part. I think the circular things we saw was a mechanism where they're working on fidelity, testing all human hosts. Uh, I think the circular things we saw in the mechanism. Uh, if you're talking about what I think you're talking about, those are the brain capsules. Like those are the marbles that go in the brain capsule. So it's literally, it's literally their brain. That's what it is. It's their brain. Um, so I think that's why I think the cradle is going to be there. And I think it's going to be filled with human based marbles or brains, for example. So that's what I think is going to happen. Um, so yeah, wow. There's a lot of chat here. Whoo. Uh, what else do we got here? Uh, da, 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 da. Chris Williams. So I'm thinking about digital heaven, but the people plugged in are ultra rich people, either too old or too sick to live normally. The souls that Dolores refers to. See, I like that idea. For me, I think the souls refer to all every single guest that has been in the park. Uh, they were against their own knowledge. William took their DNA and their information and produced a module. And that is their soul. That's the essence of who they are. And that is going to be all the souls that are kept there. Is there all the human souls that have been gathered and produced and pr pretty much being held in the cradle until they learn how to transfer it into an, a physical body? Um. Ba, 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 ba. Chris Williams, with the future option of being transferred into a host body when they get it right, the minds are encrypted and stored, which is why they need a description key in Abernathy. I need to read that again. With the future option of being transferred into a host body when they get it right, the minds are encrypted and stored, which is why they need a description uh, decryption key. You know what? Very true. And what, what you just said kind of got me thinking about um, human to host consciousness. And it's something that they've been talking about this whole season. We've seen James Delos go through that process. And I think that William is going to be the only human to transfer into that body. And I think that's a part of Ford's storyline is that Ford believes in original work. And he thinks that mankind is flawed. He thinks they're corrupt. He thinks that humans are pretty much like just slightly evolved monkeys. And he thinks that hosts are the next step of human evolution. So Ford's point of view, and he talked about it in the show, is that he thinks it's a waste to transfer humans into host bodies because there's no growth there we are still flawed and corrupt and all these things. He'd much rather look at Bernard and look at Dolores and then become better than humans and find their own selves. So that's why Bernard likes original work. He'd rather them develop their own society and build themselves up. So that's why I think much like the cradle a couple episodes ago, I think this is going to be destroyed. I think Ford's storyline is going to end with William being the only person to transfer into a host body. And then the rest, all the souls are going to be burned up and destroyed by Dolores, except for William. And there are many reasons why William is key. I talk about it over and over again. Um, but I think the key is, is that William will be the only person whose mind will accept the reality that he's in. Unlike James Delos or all these other hosts, because first of all, the suffering of his experience, I think his daughter will die and that will push him through. And secondly, he always felt Westworld was more real than his own reality. The fact that his only love in life was Dolores, who is a host. The fact that he he lived and breathed in Westworld, like a world that's stagnant. And I think he'll be the first person whose mind accepts the reality because that was William's reality all along. It's the only place he ever wanted to go to. So I think that's why he'll fit uh, really well uh, in that new body. Uh, Ralph Waldo, did the host have real feelings of pain and suffering at the time they were abused? Or did a host have to have some degree of consciousness before they could remember the loops to feel the pain? Well, I think in, in any moment, the hosts feel the pain um, and they feel the suffering and then they die and then they forget everything. And that's how they justify doing that to them because they just roll them back. They forget everything and that's it. But the suffering in the in the present time is real. 
Um, but what's key is the suffering with the reveries is that the suffering makes them like, it makes them panic. It brings them, it's so traumatic that it, it makes them jump between themselves. And that's why it's a tool for them to piece their past together. Um, so I think the pain is always there and it is the tool for them to be able to see or become conscious. So I think in both instances, instances, pain is necessary. Um, Chris Williams, this would make a load of money for Dolores or sorry. Uh, this would make a, it's funny how Dolores is like a female word for Delos, like Delos Dolores. I don't know. I found that interesting, but, uh, this would make a load of money for Delos and could now be used as a weapon if it was able to be destroyed by Dolores. Very true. It's There's like the applications for Dolores having access to every soul who's ever walked into Westworld is huge. And that's why I think it's it can be most definitely weaponized. And it's a cool way for them to integrate a new park. We've seen Raj World, Shogun World, and now we'll see Future World or we could see future world, which I think would be very cool. And I think it would be, uh, and we already were introduced to the city landscape. We saw Dolores there in episode two. So I think they're going to reuse that set and we're going to be thrown back into that environment. And I think that's very cool. Um, could Arnold be in the cradle? Remember Abernathy said violent delights lines, same as Bernard when he died. Um, I, I don't think so. Um, I think, this whole thing really started taking shape after Arnold died. Um, and I don't think there's any use for Arnold to be there. If you know what I mean, it's very possible, but I think we're really going to follow Bernard and we're going to follow um, Arnold's experiences through Bernard. And I think we're going to see Bernard find himself. And I think Arnold has served his purpose of, you know, kind of creating the maze and being that that guiding hand to Dolores. So I think Arnold will always be around in like the plots that happen, but I don't think we'll ever see Arnold physically ever again. Uh, do you think it's possible that we're seeing Emily's suicide in the bathtub, not William's wife? That Emily slit her wrists and led to William um, and led William to despair. After all, we are told his wife took pills. Yeah, but there was no blood in the tub. The tub was red. So that kind of goes against that. I initially thought it was blood too, but it's not. Um, and I think uh, I think they're in the middle of Westworld right now and William's in rough shape. I don't think Grace is going to manage to get near a bathtub. And I think him finding her would be a bit anticlimactic. So I don't think that's going to happen. I think it's genuine re or memories of his wife. And he's been seeing them since episode five or episode four. So I don't think it's his daughter at all. Um, so yeah. Oh, what else do we got here? Uh, want to ask, uh, so Brandon, uh, Estrada, uh, do you think William will see Ford in the mesh network if he is transferred into a host body? Um, no, because I think the mesh network is only ex accessible by hosts who are not conscious. Um, I think we've seen Maeve only be able to control hosts who aren't conscious Lawrence. She couldn't even control Lawrence because he was on the path. And I think once you achieve your own center, every piece of code that you've been given is all jumbled up and broken and there's nothing else that can control you anymore. I know that they ask, or I'm still trying to wrap my head around like a and Bernard being put into analysis mode. Um, but I think if you've reached true consciousness, there's no way you can be controlled. I think you 100% stand on your own. And I think the fact that William is going to be transferred consciousness into a host body, I think most definitely he won't be able to access the mesh network. Uh, Ralph Waldo, how could a host have real feelings other than what it's programming programming tells it to seem like it's feeling? Um, how could a host have real feelings other than what its programming tells it to seem like it's feeling? Because it's because the hosts are conscious now. Well, some of the hosts are conscious. And for the ones that aren't, they were told, like Dolores, for example.
whoops. She was told, sorry guys, one sec. Okay, she was told that, she was told to love Teddy and she was told to love her father because she was coded to. Um, so to me, I think she like she still likes them now because she has a shared experience with all of them. Uh, she's been with Teddy and with Abernathy for uh, like 30 years. So I think that's where that comes from. And I think once they achieve consciousness, they're just like us. So that's why I think that that's not, you know, a problem. Um, it seems like we're having a pause in the uh, feed and I'm not sure why. Sorry guys, let me know down below if you uh, if you can still pick up what I'm doing. I don't know where this uh, came from here. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Got sound, no vid. Okay, good stuff. Well, I'm gonna try and get the video up here, and I think I got it. Oh. God damn it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, hopefully it comes back on. I guess I'll just keep uh, keep reading questions. Uh, so what else do we got here? Dolores and Kishida have a different way. Why do Dolores and Nikichita have a different way of achieving the maze? Um, well, I think them achieving the maze has different benchmarks of what they achieved. Both had to go through suffering. Both had to... Um, they had reveries and memories to look back upon and it was the suffering that pushed them into realizing their uh, reveries. So I think even though they did achieve it a different way, the backbones of how they did it is relatively the same. So I wouldn't say it was really that different. And I would say Akichita did suffer pain. Um, he even says it with his wife when she was, his wife was his cornerstone and she was taken away from him, and that was the suffering that pushed him. And then realizing that she was in a storage box uh, also was a huge factor in him finding his own center. Oh, what else do we got here? POTUS says Westworld ratings are dropping. Sad. Oh, that sucks. Well, it was renewed for season three, so I think the show is going to do really well. And I think HBO wants to, you know keep it as a as a hit show so i'm confident in the future of westworld uh tanya thompson do you think that mave and akichita are conscious right now in the story uh akichita i'm up in the air with because we only got him for one season or one episode sorry so it seems like he did and he it seems like he's very self-aware so i would say yes with Maeve, like I've said it a million times, I have a million arguments of why she isn't. But it seems like they're making it like she is, even though Ford told her everything what to do until the end of season one. So I don't see how Maeve is conscious. Um, so that's just my opinion. Maybe it was a lack of writing, of good writing, because they weren't able to effectively convey that. Um but I still don't think that Maeve is, is conscious, even though information tells me otherwise. They haven't proven to me that she is. So that's how I feel about it. Uh, what else do we got here? You know what? Let me down. Let me know down below. Should I do a new live stream and kind of reboot? Because I don't know why I'm not getting on camera here. Uh, let's see. Okay, guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reboot. So I'll have a live stream up literally in two seconds, and I'm going to continue from the top of the chat and uh, answer your questions for another like half an hour or so. So give me two seconds. I'm going to open a brand new chat, and we'll get back to talking Westworld. 